First Lady Melania Trump will take the spotlight in just a few hours as she headlines night two of the Republican convention. So what can we expect to hear? Let's bring in Stephanie Grisham, Chief of Staff for Mrs. Trump. Wonderful to have you, Stephanie. Thank you so much for being a part of the show. Um, Thank you. So the, the First Lady is the best character witness for the president. What does she want to accomplish tonight? Her speech tonight is going to be very positive and uplifting, which is her signature. Uh, she wants to look forward. She wants to talk about what she as First Lady plans to do when the president wins another four years. But she also wants to lay out uh, for the American people while it's so, why it's so important that the president become reelected. You know, something I think people forget is that this is a First Lady that really embodies the American dream. She came mm. from a working class family and is an immigrant who came to this country and worked very, very hard to achieve her dream. So that's going to be put in there, too. There will be some personal anecdotes. Um, and I think people will be very surprised at how great the speech is. Uh, well, well, I don't know. I think that she has a great way with words. And I always enjoy listening to her. And I think one of the appeals about this speech is that you don't hear from her all that mm -hmm. often. So it's like there's a little bit of mystery, so everybody's going to want to tune in. There is this headline I wanted to ask you about in Politico that Trump's scare tactics aren't working on women in the suburbs. And this is out of Charlotte, North Carolina. Voters of both parties can see through the GOP strategy of frightening them about an urban crime wave. I, I, without asking you to detail whether she will talk about urban crime waves, um, do, do you think that she has an ability to appeal to some of the women that might, might have dropped off from 2016? Absolutely. I think this first lady is very, very relatable. Even in her, her initiative, Be Best, I mean, she focuses on children and caring for children of this country and taking care of the most vulnerable. She will talk about her role as a mother. Um, she also commends mothers across this country um, for yeah. how hard they work, and especially right now in the age of COVID. You mentioned it earlier. There are people who are playing teachers at homes while they're taking care of their children and wondering how they're going to get back to work. So she touches on that as well. Um, I wanted to ask you about this criticism that the Rose Garden update um, was done just for her to give this speech, which sounds, well, obviously, I know it's ludicrous. These types of things take so long to plan. Yes. Without the pandemic, the first family would have been out of the White House for the month of August when all this work could have been done. Maybe give you a chance to maybe put that criticism to rest. Yes, absolutely. This was something that was in, in the works for months. Uh, Mrs. Trump was working with historians, horticulturists, um, and many, many people on putting it back to its original 1962 design, which was one of the originals by Bunny Mellon. A fun fact I want to say is that this is the White House Rose Garden, correct? We went from having six rose, rose bushes in the, the garden to 120 now. We removed mm -hmm. trees that will be able to let the roses flourish. Those will be put all over the ground so we, we aren't taking anything away. Um, and we made it ADA compliant, which was wonderful. We had an event there last night and there were some people in wheelchairs who were able right. to be right up front and be with the president. And this happens on the anniversary of the Americans for Disabilities Act being signed um, under George H.W. Bush's administration. They just celebrated this year. Okay, I have a question. So some people are saying that this is the most important speech that the First Lady will ever make. And I know people say that about a lot of speeches. But how does she deal with pressure like that? Does she have a go-to routine before a speech? Like, what's her favorite dinner beforehand? Does she like to practice? <laughs> does, she like to, does she chill out? What, what's her plan? I'm never going to give away those secrets, but uh, she, she, doesn't, she doesn't feel the pressure. It's not that I've ever seen. She's calm. She's cool, collected. She knows that it's going to be live TV. If something happens, it happens. Um, it's, it's really admirable. She's, she's done it this entire time. And while I think this is a very, very important speech for our country, I don't know that it's her most important speech. She speaks uh, to children, and I, I would argue that that's very, very important, too, on, on how to Will she talk about what she might want to do in a second term? Yes, she will lay out some things that she would plan to do in the second term. All right, well, I'm going to tune in because I want to see if she goes back to Africa, which I thought that trip was amazing. Stephanie Grisham, thank you so much. Thank you.